So, good morning. So, I've talked about smelly vision and how great it would be sometimes. Right now, not so time. Not the time. I've just uh, been watering everything, feeding lots of the plants, trees around, and you can see here with my compost tea mix. You can see the flies are loving it actually. Okay, and lots of flies in here, which isn't a good idea. But anyway, lots of flies uh, because they love this. It's really smelly stuff, but it's fantastic for the garden. So I watered everything uh, and what I had left, I've just put in here onto these beds and I bought these to go in because I want to get ahead of the game. So, or, or let's say I'm a bit behind on the game, so I want to catch up. So I have some melons, some uh, squash, lettuce, more tomatoes, some peppers and rucula at the back there. And as well as that, I got some, uh, what are they called? Yes, I got some of these, which was nice. I didn't know they sell these. So these are sweet potato slips. Last year we did them ourselves. This year I just bought a pack because it made it a lot easier. So I spent about a tenner, I think, on all of these plugs. So I'm hoping that that will give us back a load more. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a load of leaf mould on here. Hopefully that will dampen down the flies a little bit. Uh, mix that in and then plant up the plugs. So here's the leaf mould I collected from our woodland and it's quite well rotted and so that's going to go onto these beds. Maybe we should have called this channel So Portugal. So I always go so. Anyway, oh, the flies are going mental in here. Right, let's hopefully this will put them off when I put this mould on. So I've unloaded the leaf mould onto the beds where I'm going to be putting all of my new plugs. And yeah, now I've got to rake it in, mix it in a bit. Found a fabulous tool. I was looking for a garden fork, a normal garden fork. And I looked in Agriloja, one of the big Agriloja type stores, and they didn't have one. I looked in Brickamarsh, they did have one, and it wasn't very well made, and it was 40 euros. So I thought, I'm not going to buy that. So I found this in my shed, it had been knocking around, I'd seen it around. Never really used it though, because I've been sort of doing the no dig. But this was a game changer. It's actually really good to break up the soil. I've realised that I do need to break the soil up a bit more. So no dig is not always perfect depending on your circumstances. And I've learnt that now that sometimes I do need to break up the soil. Because what was happening is the little plugs that I was putting in were sort of getting pot bound in effect. Because the clay soil wasn't allowing them to bre break into it. So... Ah, I thought, well, I need to start breaking up the soil a bit. It's definitely worked for these tomatoes, which are coming on really well. You can't really see that one there, 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 where I have broken up the soil, and they're growing really nicely. So, yeah, I've realised that I do have to break up the soil a bit, which I don't like doing, but just to get the organic matter in here and mix it in with the, the clay soil, because I've got quite clay soil in certain places. So... Now it's time to mix this into the ground and it seems to be putting off some of the flies, so that's good.
So I've planted the melons. I think this is a Galia melon. The idea is they're going to grow up in the middle and I will hang them, you know, give them lots of support to grow straight upwards. And then we have a row of tomatoes along here. So a row of tomatoes along there. Again, going to get support like these ones, which are doing very well. And next, in this area, I'm going to plant loads of lettuces around so I can, yeah, so they'll grow around the base and they'll act as a bit of a, a suppression of weeds, mulch as they grow. So that's another idea. We like promoting local businesses. So I, today I've got the honor of being in Livros Tintos, a fantastic bookshop in Fundao. And the owner is here, Zef. Hello. Yes. And Zef, could you tell us a little bit about your shop and what you're doing here? Yeah, we're here in, um, if, for people who don't know where, where this part of the city is, it's uh, Avenida Eugenia Dandrar, Lot 80, Loja Saiz. It's near Rudy's shop, Studio Indigo, uh, just a block down. Uh, it's sort of near the Pharmacia Sena Padesh. You can look it up on Google Maps. It's just on the corner here. And um, yeah, we've been here for about two months, <laughs> just over two months. And yeah, it's, it's a, a kind of a, my idea was to have a bookshop that's, that's a, a community hub and a place for people to meet. Um, so. <coughs> We've got a good collection of books in um, Portuguese for a large part, lots of English books, maybe 2,000 English books, and then some um, random French ones, um, some German ones, even one or two Swedish and some Dutch. So, um, and yeah, the, the kind of place that I had in mind then was a place that you can buy books and can. Um, sit down on, on a sofa, I've got sofas and I've got tables and chairs and I sell coffee and wine and beer and um, whiskey, all kinds of drinks, soft drinks obviously as well, <coughs> um, fruit juice. And it's to have a, have a seat, read a book, meet with your friends, make new friends, which is great, there's lots of people that meet for the first time here and they become friends. and. Um, then we run events, cultural events. So it's also a cultural space to have events. Like we have the, the Cine Club Gardunia, who, who run regular film sessions here, one a month. Um, then we have, for instance, tonight on the 26th of April, we're having protest and poetry to, to celebrate. Yesterday is um, 
Freedom Day and, and Freedom Day for everyone. Uh, stuff like that, book launches, we're having Paul Faria here next week, the 1st of May, with his new book. Um, so book launches, we're very open space for anyone who wants to come and do anything, show a film, uh, talk about um, books, poetry, uh, present their book, present their um, ideas, even if people want to meet for like writing clubs, you know, all of that, we're, we're open for community, yeah. So that sounds absolutely fabulous, it's a brilliant addition to Fundau. You fit in really well here, don't you? You seem to enjoy <laughs> yeah, the, the, yeah. the place of Fundau, the absolutely. town. Yeah, and it's a great city. It's a very, um, a very cultured, Fundau has a bit of a, a history of being uh, more, um, having a larger concentration of artists uh, compared to bigger cities, for instance, there's bigger cities around that don't have as many. Uh, and it's always been sort of like a haven for, for creative people to yeah. get together. You know, in the times of the fascism, it's far from Lisbon, so the police never came here to look for the people that were writing, like, yeah. you know, uh, Saramago. <laughs> and, yeah, and so it's got a bit of a subculture and um, yes, sort yes. of alternative culture here, sort of against, obviously, the nasty forces of fascism and uh, that, that sort of side of things. So it... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. It's it's sort of, of, subculture is the word. Yeah, sub, it's, well, that's my my, it has my logo. It's international books and subculture. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Thank you so much for uh, letting us know a bit about your shop. Of course, Conrad. Thank you very much. Definitely, if you are in Fundau, pop in, check it out. It's really interesting. There's some amazing books. I've just picked up this today. I'm very excited. I'm very much into nature books, so. I'm looking forward to reading this. It'll help me with my Portuguese as well. Here we go. This is my next batch of comfrey for the comfrey tea. If you don't know about comfrey, it's a fantastic green manure. So you put it into water, let it get really stinky, and then turns into a fabulous feed for most plants, high in potassium and nitrogen and also has some phosphorus in it as well so it's a really mpk fertilizer that along with nettles is really good and if you're coming from the uk or northern europe where comfrey grows very well bring some with you because you don't find it often here and even nettles seem to be a bit scarce depending on where you are so I'm encouraging these nettles to grow because I love, I want their, their resource. And as you can see, this whole patch here is now ready to be strimmed actually. And I'll probably strim this and these nettles I will put around the veggies and let them break, be a slow release fertilizer. You can watch our video on how to make comfrey tea or watch someone else's video on comfrey tea or and the one I had before, which I've just used up, had docks and nettles and various other bits and pieces in it. And it all helps. Strawberries are looking lovely. And I've got my first batch of strawberries, which is really nice. They're really tasty as well, really tasty strawberries. Anyway, I will put those in there, ready to be chopped up and made into a very strong comfrey tea. Ah, we'll be eating beans for quite some time. Oh, hello, Ant. Cropped half of the broad beans now, pulled up this side. And I'm going to use the, obviously, the plant material as compost. That'll be fantastic. It's a nitrogen fixer, so I cut, the, cut them down and left the roots in so that nitrogen is fixed in the soil. Next in is the brassicas. 
as you can see there, they're just acclimatizing to their space. There's some purple sprouting broccoli and some kale in there, and I know they do really well in this bed, so obviously I need to go over, clear it of weeds, and then plant it up. 